Welcome back to Data Race. This is week 156, day two. Um, and as always, you know, time's short, so we'll just jump straight into the uh, battle. Then we'll look at the defense results. I did finish getting some of their uh, two S. Not everybody. Like Regan, I didn't touch Regan. But uh, Claude, um, Grima, and Ascended Fjorm, we got them all to S. And uh, for Mer, we only got her to A. But we'll work on that by tomorrow. Alright, um, we have uh, Baruka. Oh, this is going to be like a flyer ball. Ah, uh, no, it's not a flyer ball. Just a Baruka. Um, uh, let me see. Kagero. Guess we could go. This might be a good chance to test that. Um, Ephraim uh, Fjorm combo. So he'll take Soleil out, no problem. Uh, we'll have to test this trap before any other trap. There's no 7 in it, so we can set up to go this way, I guess. If I start breaking stuff, they'll um, they'll start coming this way, so I may not want to break too much. Like, if I leave these two things up, she will not go this way to break this. We're gonna try this thing. We do have a healing tower, so we don't have to worry about that. the other trap though over here so maybe this is the fake one over here yeah it is the fake one uh range range i uh, have you have one two attack right here so that's not a big deal yes and on this side well we want nephew over decided. here just for the damage reduction. Why not? Oh, Is there a sixty gravity trap? Explain. I guess there is. Okay. Not cool. What do you but need? That just means we have to wait one more turn. A little annoying. Definitely didn't want to do that but uh let's see i understand Baruka, um, there's no dancer so to victory we can go here dance i'm going in mm, how do i want to do this Do I just go for it? I think I can just go for it. I'm just gonna go for it then. Close your eyes. Real shame that I I'm accidentally step on that trap. You wanted a fight. Oh, she had damage reduction from somewhere, I guess. Her weapon. We can go right here. Baruka does not reach. Even if Baruka reach, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But we want here for the damage reduction, and that way we don't have to move your arm anyway. I can do this. I won't lose. Yes. Explain. Lady Niffle. All right. 
So here we go. Trasier does zero damage and takes. Actually, I think she doesn't take any extra damage either. Oh yeah, she takes the two damage that we negate. Kagero. We can take out Baruka just with Ignis, that's pretty cool. And funny at the same time. So let's do that because she has, she's, actually why does she have the Hacko Lantern? I guess for the HP, that's why she has Hacko Lantern instead of uh, Baruka's weapon. I mean both of them have guard anyway, so in. they're using her the same exact way in both instances. That's pretty fun. Ah, uh, yeah. We're not running Gale Force, otherwise we would have been able to Gale Force him right there. Yeah. And we have to start making moves on this side. We know this is the fake trap. We know this is the real trap. And we also yes. know that we don't want to touch Altena. Uh, we don't want to move up in a way that Altena can reach us. So. Explain. Guess we can do this. Oh, I'll do it. Yes. I'll protect uh, you. Yeah. He needs to be solo in order to get his. Guarantee follow up attack, although I don't think it matters right here. I won't lose. All right, so over here. What do you need? I won't lose. All right. I understand. Um, I'm going in. I don't think it would be a smart idea to um, not tank her to uh, yeah, to tank her. Not because I think that she will kill us, but I think that we might kill her. Lady Niffle. To victory. So I'm let's just. In. Do something like this. Explain. Yes. Oh, I'll do it. I think she will come over here, following Plumeria. Yep. Then Fjorm should be able to handle her. Ether. Turn five. I'll protect you. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get your Ignis. It is decided. I guess we can just do it like this. Yes. We'll let Niffle. Just finish it. Yeah. 
All right, pretty simple. Nothing too much about it. No dancer mean. Um, there was no thread, and I'm actually. It's kind of funny that we were able to one shot that Baruch. Well, not one shot. One round KO, a Baruka through her guard effect with a blue unit, physical blue unit, nonetheless. All right, so let's take a look. It is unfortunately a 50 point loss and look, what's with the dual secrets people? All right, so this is a double, uh, double Plumeria Ninja Lin, technically five dancers in one. Uh, so yeah, we have plus two, plus three ninja lane with uh, summoner supported, reposition, blaze sessions, desperation. Plus one, plus three regen, attack defense solo, reposition. One of the two peonies, uh, wings of mercy, moonbow, chill speed. The other peony doesn't have a special, wings of mercy, drive attack. Plumeria, chill defense. Mumbo Wings of Mercy and Naga with Smite, Attack, Defense, Link and Chill Attack. So Attack, Speed, Defense, all the chills needed. So initiate against Grima. Grima does have Guard so... It does help Lin, it puts her in uh, Wings of Mercy. Go for it. Use Desperation. You're I mean, even without Desperation, she still takes out Ines. Lin, I'm not sure I can. Courage, Florina. They kind of gambled that trap right there. I mean, yeah, that could have been bad, like that trap. Not, I mean, they have fans, but. Prepare yourself. Yeah, once you're in Wings of Mercy Desperation with an Angel and you just go to town. Nothing big. And with the plethora of dancers that they have. So we can I with Regan. And then you're finished. Yeah. She still doesn't Listen, kill him in uh just two hits, so this time is the desperation that comes in handy. Yeah, thanks to Blade Sessions and just getting like what, ports plus 36 attack. Oh, and that's it. So not bad, I guess. Um, we do lose a lot of points, so bad for us, but not but not too bad in the way they're going about it. Ninja Lin is even with like Ninja Corin coming out with is just Ninja Lin on a horse. She's still gonna be pretty good. Uh but the update uh dropped, so we do have weapon refineries. And I gotta say, um so for well let's go with Marv first. 
So for Marv, I haven't done it yet. Um, I have enough refining stones. I just don't have that refining uh, do. So I have to refine other weapons. So I have enough refine to refine their weapons. But so there were two things that I thought that would be good for Marv. One, I said it in a video that it was like um, would be good for him to like uh, prevent. Um, the two things he needs is like one to prevent uh, panic, and the other one would be to like uh, go anti lol. That would be like the two things I said like would be the best for him. But the other idea I had that I didn't actually mention because I didn't think they would go that route was just to give him uh, the unity effect, which is pretty much what they gave him. They just gave him unity. So basically, if you buff him and then you throw him under a panic manner, he still gets his, it's like, uh, if he still has bonus doubler active. Except it's actually stronger because it does, um, it does uh, stack with bonus doubler. So for example, if he's not panic, but he just has debuffs. So say he's getting hit by bright shine and dark shine, right? So minus nine and minus nine, which is, I think that's the maximum of, Bright Shrine, or worse, say he's hit by uh, Infantry School. So that's minus nine and minus nine. But he still has his bonus doubler active. Uh, so he still has his bonuses because and he's just been debuffed. So he'll get those minus nine will become plus nine. Well, plus 18, but minus nine, so plus nine. And he'll still have his uh, plus six from his uh, Shining Emblem. So he'll have plus six and plus nine, plus 15, because they do stack and if it, and say he's panic. So he'll have the minus six from his uh, buffs and then uh, the debuffs of minus nine. Again, they stack plus 15. So he gets his bonus doubler effect one way or another. Even if it's through buffs or debuffs, he'll get his uh, bonus stats. Not only that, he does get plus four stats to all stats if he's above 50%. So doesn't need to be within two stats, two spaces of an ally or anything like that. It's just above 50%. He'll get an extra plus four to all stats. So again, this is a really, really good uh, effect for him. Oh, and then he does get an extra plus four plus four if he initiates or is within two spaces of an ally. So the first plus four needs to be a 50% only. The second plus four needs to be within two spaces of an ally. He can get one or the other or both. So technically the max he can get would be say he has plus seven to all stats. Um you know hone join yeah join hone attack and then Azura oh no hone attack four and then Azura buffs him. So plus seven to all stats and then uh Say he gets panic and he's under a max level infantry school, which is minus nine. So that would be plus uh, seven and plus plus seven, uh, seven plus nine is 14. So that would be plus 14. And say he's above 50% and within two spaces, that's an extra eight. So that's uh, plus 22 to all stats. Uh, that's I think that would be the maximum right now that he's able to get um, one way or another I guess the only the only other way that he could get even more stats than that would technically be if he was like get hit by the um, yeah gets hit by a Bright Shrine, uh, by a Infantry School, then gets Harsh Command, then turns those buffs into, those debuffs into buffs, and then gets hit by a Panic Manor on top of the debuffs for the next turn, then I guess that would be plus 9, plus 9. Is I don't think it's feasible to be able to do it, but I guess it could happen. And that would be like the maximum amount of stats you can get, uh, so that would be like plus 26 to all stats. Mm -hmm. The highly unlikely to happen. All in all, it's just Marv gets a lot of stats from his weapon. And of course, combined with Binding Blade 2, I mean Binding Shield 2, which 
uh, as long as he's fast speed faster than his allies, they cannot make a follow up attack and he just gets the sweep effect. And the shiny emblem will start him out with plus six plus six. So basically treat Marv as if he's always has plus 12 to all stats. No matter what, just think of it like that. I mean, plus six to all stats, yeah. Debuff turns into buff, minus six becomes plus six. So, under debuff, uh, plus six, plus 12. Under debuffs, plus six. Basically, Marv always gets stats. <laughs> Just think of it like that. Uh, so, you want to buff him and throw him under a panic manor in a infantry school. So, on infantry school, fire weeks, Marv can carry you through games. Um, next up, we have Tiki, which her original effect is just this encounter. That's it. And of course, that damage because she's a dragon. Her new effect keeps the base effect of the weapon, but now if at the start of combat or if she's above 24%, guys, him plus 4 to all stats. So basically, like this is uh, all legendaries up to date have gotten plus four to plus four to all stats on their weapon all of them uh ike Luz, uh, fjorm grima um rioma marv tiki and we're about to look at hector but up like all of them have the plus four to all stats um so that's something you can think about like if you uh when we go into legendary finds just automatically you can pretty much assume that they'll get the plus four plus four unless they're well we'll get to that uh and then um and inflicts penalty on force attacks equals 75 percent of bonuses on units death and rest during combat so of course bonuses are visible stats and she comes with of course with everyone too which gives her plus six plus six at start of combat which is within two spaces of an ally, so 6 and 6 is 12, 75% of 12 is 9, so she inflicts minus 9 attack to uh, minus 9 attack to an enemy in combat, which basically turns out to be like plus 9 death and rest to her. Since she is a far safe unit, just that will put her rest at 31 plus 6 is 37 plus nine is uh 46 plus four from the um savior effect 50 so she can get up to 50 rest just by herself no one else helping her out uh so yeah that's pretty incredible for t uh, as a far save unit especially uh, and of course, they gave her Crafty Fighter, which nullifies all debuffs on her. So you are free to just give her tactics and without having to worry about uh, debuffs. So yeah, really good update for Tiki. And of course, we have Hector, uh, which is the Hector does but This is the merge Hector. All right. So for Hector... He gets Thunder Armats, which used to be just defense plus three, and he needed to have more allies and enemy to get to nullify the follow-up attack. Well, that's gone. His weapon is completely changed, and now he is. Grants defense plus three. If he needs within three spaces of an ally, inflicts attack defense minus five four during combat, and fucking make a follow-up attack. So he gets to keep that no follow-up attack with a way easier um, requirement of instead of just being... Uh, allied, more allies than enemies in two spaces. He just needs one ally in three spaces. And on top of that, he gains... Uh, he inflicts attack and defense minus five. So this is why I was like... Uh, uh, when I say Tiki to date. So everybody that I mentioned before her gets the plus four, plus four. Hector is the only one that doesn't get the plus four to all stats because he gets plus five attack and defense. I mean, he inflicts... Minus five attack and defense on enemy, and then his refine inflicts an additional attack and defense of minus five if the foe initiates or is above 75%. And since Hector is pretty much an enemy face unit, so you're pretty much always gonna get that 
uh, minus 10 attack and minus 10 defense, which translates, of course, to plus 10 attack, plus 10 defense, and plus 10 res. And he gets damage reduction on the first hit during combat. So it's not the uh, on first hit uh, that turn, no, it's just 40% on first hit during combat. He, of course, has uh, prevents follow up attacks. So basically, that first hit is that all that damage you should be taking on with Hector, unless you got, of course, no follow-up or a guarantee follow-up attack on a unit that's faster than him, yada, yada, yada. But all in all, it makes Hector a really big wall. M minus 10 attack, uh, ba which basically translates to plus 10 attack, uh, plus 10 defense on him. Uh, like mine right now has 45 defense, that would be 55 defense. And 57 attack, which basically would translate to 67 attack. And as a distant counter unit, he also get that minus 5. Uh, since he's debuffing attack, that's basically like buffing his res. So that's an extra plus 10 res. Put him at 37 on light season with uh, air and dagger. That would be an extra 10 for 47 res. So he, you can use him as a tank. Uh, he's back to being a tank, like you can use on iterates. Just uh, I guess uh, you can run him as a support tank, or I guess you can also get rid of this encounter and give him near save, and he becomes a really strong near save wall. Uh, basically, you got options. Uh, so that's it for the three legendaries. Uh, that are getting it, we do have one GHP unit, and that is, of course, Linus, who's got the Fang Basilicos as his new weapon. And basically, Fang Basilicos is basically like getting the life and death effect without the repercussions. So, he still keeps his um, XLA speed. Um, he has a slain effect, and then he gets, if a unit is above its 25 SP, gets attack and speed plus 5. So there's basically the attack and speed of life and death without life without the minus 5 defense and rest. And then at start of combat, if false HP is above 75%, inflicts speed defense minus 5, the minus 5 of the lol effect. On four during combat, any flex penalties on four speed and defense during combat equals to current bonus on each four stats. So basically, that's the pleasure effect of doubling debuffs. Yeah, so basically doubling debuffs um, and on top uh, inflicting in combat debuffs. So yeah, say they have minus five defense. He inflicts a minus five and the other minus five for a grand total of uh, minus ten. Uh, the other units that we got, I don't have. Uh, I don't have Tana. I don't have uh, Kase as a five star, and I don't have um, uh, what's his name, Cliff. Uh, but what I saw, Cliff's weapon. Uh, keeps the the enemy must have more attack than him but it actually makes it just like if enemy has more attack than him he gets plus 5 to all stats I believe uh, I didn't check Cassis yet and Tana just uh, gets the uh, reverse uh, no way effect so instead of like getting people to move to her uh, moving two spaces, she gives people the ability to move within two spaces of units within two spaces. So expect a lot of like shenanigans of units flying around everywhere and attacking within two spaces. Uh, but yeah, that's basically all their finds. Um, the banner, if it's live, then we can look at their stats. If it's not, no, the banner will not is not live yet. So I think it goes live tomorrow so we can look at the stats afterwards because it's already past 3 a.m. So yeah. 
it already turned to the next day. As you know, I always play close. Like, when I play at night, I'm always playing right up against the time of um, when it switches to the next day. Uh, but yeah, um, that is pretty much it. Um, I'll definitely be looking to use Marv on iterates a lot more. Um, I could even use him as a a front partner for a near safe tank, so front tar target for Fiorm or Tiki. Uh, they're both on this season right now, Fire and Earth, so they can work well with each other. Uh, Marv buffs Tiki, Tiki buffs um, herself and him, you know, a lot of buffing, and he can be the frontliner to her. Uh, but yeah. That's pretty much it for today, so thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!